Good morning, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for joining the session. I see a large number of people are waiting on the YouTube channel to join the session. We are really excited to be back. A legacy which we started a year back, talking about our Solution Architect Bootcamp to continue and carry forward that with new enthusiasm for 2023. We are back with another interesting topic and another series this year, which will be focused on security posture on AWS. We are frequently hearing different kinds of issues. Someone hacked the S3 bucket, someone get in the AWS environment, the EC2 got compromised. This has become like day in, day out discussions now in the entire cloud world, right? And with that motivation, we thought, okay, why let's not talk about how you can posturally, foundationally learn security and help to correct the majors and implement the right thing for your application. So that was the whole idea about security. And that, with that idea, AWS User Group Mumbai. So AWS Mumbai User Group is happy to announce Raise Your Security Posture Series. This will be a two-month series spread across March and April where we'll come up with the weekends, different kinds of sessions, talking about different holistic views, the frameworks, the hands-on contents. So you really understand what are the things you need to do to talk about it. I can see some of the audience have already started talking about the things, what they read in the news, or the other kinds of companies and hack and all. Obviously, you guys are right. That's what the whole idea is, to get you aware about how you can protect yourself your organization and the things which you are working on. So my name is Sanchit, you know me. I'm an AWS hero as well as an AWS user group lead. And with that, let me kickstart our series of security posture. So this series, as I mentioned, is will be in virtual weekend series, which will be starting from today till mid of April. And we it will be live on our AWS user group channel. So AWS user group channel is something where we will be going. So you don't have to worry about con of login and all. This will be live on our AWS channel. So just in case if you are watching this on a live mode, uh, on demand basis, don't worry. If you have any questions, you can put in the chat. Our speakers will ensure that offline after the session, they will answer it. So keep posting your messages. We are here to help you out, discuss the issues and help you to learn. And along with that, as I mentioned about the objective, our objective is to get you the knowledge of shared responsibility, right? We always think that when it comes to security, it's the responsibility of the cloud provider to handle security, but that's not the case. Security is always a shared responsibility. AWS here will provide you the basic functionality about how you need to do security, but in order to enable the right security configuration for a given services, like if you're using Lambda, if you're using, let's say, S3 bucket. So it's in your hand what you want to configure or enable. It's not AWS job, right? AWS will recommend but whether it to enable it not, it's your thing. So it's a shared responsibility model, which also we will talk about it. Along with that, government of India, as well as the entire IT industry has also designed some sort of a frameworks, right? That frameworks in conjunction with AWS principles help us to design the right posture. So we'll in, I mean, today's session itself, we'll start talking about that framework right from ground zero. But that's exactly what we will start doing around that, how exactly we can have all of these frameworks in tie up with AWS services to understand that holistic view of how to get the security here. Moving towards next, I want to talk about quickly our speakers. So we have a great lines of speakers across industry who have been doing their security implementations in their organizations across healthcare, insurance, and other verticals, which is a top most compliant industry we all know, right? So if I quickly talk about, we will have Aishwarya Gupta, Disha, Gaurav, Manish, Raji, Shashank, and Shashank, two Shashanks. So we'll have different sets of speakers here. They are very experts in their space. We'll have them in each of the sessions talking about it and talking about their experiences, what they see in the market, how they their knowledge can help you to learn from it, right? So please, I would request how motivated you are for day one. Be motivated at the end of the sessions. And if you're bored, you know whom to reach out. So please don't worry. Reach out to me, bug me. We will try to make it interesting for you. But please join for all of the sessions and I'll ensure that you will get the right thing. Last, I want to talk about our community partners. This is all possible with help of, I mean, AWS User Group Mumbai can do it, but it's not possible without our community partners who help us to promote in their communities and help to get more audiences to learn, right? So we are very much happy that the community partners for these events are AWS User Group Indore, Nasik, Rajkot, and Dehradun. 
as well as there are some external community partners like UPSC, CSA, CNCF Thani and DevOps community. So we really acknowledge and appreciate all our community partners for helping us to organize this session and motivating us to go beyond ourselves, right? If you want to, I see that question at the right time, how you can contribute to AWS User Group Mumbai, a common question which I asked by many of the folks. So AWS User Group Mumbai is live on all the social media channels. You talk about LinkedIn, Slack, Meetup, Twitter, Insta, and WhatsApp, right? Wherever you talk about, we are there. So please join any of our channels and DM me in that channel, or you can message me on Slack, WhatsApp, or LinkedIn. We can interact and we can talk about if you have some ideas of doing some events, we can talk about that. Or if you have, want to learn, help us as volunteers. We really need volunteers to scale our entire team. So please reach out, subscribe to any of the things for the new events, as well as reach out if you have some wonderful ideas. We'll be happy to talk about that. With that, I don't want to bore you more. So let me bring up for today's session. So today's session, we will be talking about or kickstarting our entire series. And the best thing to always kickstart is why, right? why you want to do or what's an overview, right? So today's session will be led by Sashank. He's a technical trainer at AWS India. Day in, day out, he worked with different customers to help them understand what is security, what are compliance framework, shared responsibility, well-architect frameworks. So I don't think any other best speaker we can get to talk about the overview of security on AWS. So with that, let me get Sashank on the stage. Hey, Sashank, good morning. How are you doing today? Hey, hi everyone. Hi Sanchez. Very good morning. I'm doing good. Thanks for asking. Hope things are good at your end too, buddy. Same here. Thank you so much. Yeah, all good. So yeah, I'll pass it on to you. And last thing, yes, I see a question. Yes, this entire session will be recorded on AWS User Group YouTube channel. Don't worry. I would request if you have already registered with our bootcamp platform, we will send you the link of the YouTube channel after the session as well as presentation. So I would request everyone, if you have not registered it, I've just posted the link in the session in the chat. Please do register so you don't have to worry about the updates, the reminders, all sorts of materials. We will take care of that. You just have to subscribe, right? So please do it right now. Register yourself. And with that, I'll pass it on to Sashank to go ahead with today's session. Thank you. Uh, just give me a second, please, everyone. I'm presenting my screen. Give me a second. That's all. Uh, share screen. I'll begin with the very first question that do let me know if you can see my screen and I'll present my slide. If you can see, let me know with a plus one in the chat section. That really helps me understand team. Can you see that? Yeah. Yes, Sasha. We can. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Sanchez, for handing over to me. Okay. Good morning, everyone. T today I'm here to talk all about introducing you of cloud security and what exactly and how exactly you can contribute to improve the cloud security posture. You can do your part. We'll be getting started in very small, small baby steps way. I'll introduce you to first exactly why we are talking about cloud, what is cloud security all about, and what are the frameworks. With so many frameworks, how do I manage to keep a tab on them? And then how would I implement them? Why there are so many services? how we can map those services to which domains. And then we'll talk about when everything is ready, when your landing zone is ready, and you're bringing your application to the cloud, how you will ensure that there is no incident happening, how you'll ensure there is no leak happening in your data, or there are no APIs which are kept open. So we'll talk about well-architected framework, and I'll revolve around the security pillar there. Okay, so I'm Shushank. I'm a technical trainer coming in from AWS Mumbai. And I will be taking this session, which is all about introduction to AWS Cloud Security. Since it's an overview session, it may be a little texty. I'll try to give examples. I'll try to share my experience as well as I'll try to uh, keep it as interactive as possible. So feel free to ask your questions at any given point of time. If I'm able to pick them up, I'll take them or we'll park them and we'll take it up at the end of this session. Okay, all the links, what I'm going to share, I have put it up in a URL, a single URL, and it will be made available to you. Likewise, it's being said, the share, the slides will be shared to you, so don't worry about it. All I want you to do is make notes, learn with us, and try to answer, okay? So I'll be asking you certain questions. I want you to respond as well. Okay, team? So with this, let's get started to the very first slide of ours. 
So that will be why cloud infrastructure. Can anyone tell me why exactly we are moving everything to cloud or why the cloud is a buzzword? Okay. So what is all about cloud? Why do we keep on talking about it or hearing about it? Can anyone like to uh, tell a line or two about it in the chat? Would you like to leverage that chat section and let me know? Everyone, why we are moving towards cloud? What is cloud computing all about? What is that buzzword? OK, any one or two words, you can see it on screen, right? Why are we moving towards cloud or why are we talking about it is cheap. Uh, is the price only the thing? Any other answers? They are there on your screen. So firstly, let me begin with, OK, scalability and move away from on-prem restrictions. Yes, it's scalable and reliable, right? What else? What else it could be? For security, OK, yes. So firstly, I'll begin with what is cloud computing, right? So cloud computing is what? It is on-demand delivery of IT resources over the internet. Yeah, so no longer you are no longer you are going and commissioning a data center, but you are going to use it as with the pay as you go pricing. Yeah, so pay as you go pricing. Yes, so easy infrastructure management. So the very first one we are talking about is agility. What does that mean? I got an idea and I want to spin an EC2 instance. I want to spin an application server. So what you will do? You won't go and sit for you know planning how big data center you want, how big your server has to be. Almost it used to take four to six weeks to get started. Now it's with a launch button. You can spin up your EC2 instance and get your application live. You don't have to worry about capacity guessing. So basically, unlimited scalability is what? One user or 1,000 users, 1 million users, your application will be running smoothly on our infrastructure. You don't have to worry about scaling. We do horizontal scaling. We'll, look up, we'll talk about that as and when we proceed further. Improve reliability. You don't have to worry about where exactly our data centers are. We do talk only about regions, right? Regions, availability zone. All you have to take care about is your application is running on minimum two availability zones to ensure that your application is highly available and lower the cost. So no longer you are doing as a CapEx investment. All you're going to pay is pay as you go model. So you have to worry about your operation cost, OPEX cost. Gone are those days in the old days, right? We used to have a dynamo generator along with um, you know, uh, we were spinning up a factory, so you had to have your dynamo generator, you had to generate a power. But now, no more, it's something like that. You're paying just like as you use or consume, right? So everyone now is talking about cloud infrastructure, and it's almost 15 to 16 years. EC2 instance was being launched, and still we are talking about it, and there are some misconfigurations which happen. So let's talk about those things. I presume before I get started that, you know, you have basics knowledge of OSI layers, OSI layers, what are those OSI layers? Any idea? What is OSI layers? Anyone? What are those seven layers? How do you remember that? Anyone? What are those OSI seven layers? Any idea? Physical layer? Then? PDNT SPA is what we remember as please don't touch Steve's pet alligator. So what was that? Physical layer, data layer, right? Network layer, transport layer, sessions layer, presentation layer, and application layer. You need to know these layers. I hope and assume that you know these, right? Network transport, L7, L3, L4 is the three major ones which we talk all about, right? If you don't have a fair idea about it, I'll request, uh, you know, you will, will be sharing you a link and you can deep dive there, right? But what I assume is you have basic knowledge about cloud, yeah, and we will be talking about that shortly. Very rightly said by Krishna Chaitanya. Thanks a lot. Uh, please don't throw spicy pizza away. That's another way you can remember those seven layers. And you need to understand how you protect them and how you apply security at each layer. Okay, so we are going to talk all about cloud today. So I'll get started with the next slide. Let's have a look what's in store. Okay, so there are three kind of deployment models. The first one is public cloud. In public cloud, what do you have? You have cloud providers like Amazon. What do you do? You don't invest in CapEx. You don't have to worry about capacity planning, right? You're going to pay only for what you're going to use. Then comes as a private cloud. Who would use private cloud? Any example? Which particular industry domain loves or has to use private cloud majorly for the applications? Any idea? 
Any idea? Which particular domain? Telecom. Take an example of telecom and finance workloads, right? They are majorly on private cloud. So what do you do is you are purchasing your hardware and you are going to have a complete control over your resources and security. Why it's needed? We'll talk about that. Okay. And when you want to make the best of the public and the private cloud, yeah, at that time you're going for is a hybrid cloud. It gives you flexibility. It gives you to have the best of both worlds, right? And you can have your control over security, compliance, and legal requirement. Fine. So we'll see these things as and when we proceed. Let's get started with introduction to AWS. Okay. AWS is one of the most comprehensive and broadly adopted cloud platform. We have more than 200 plus services available there. From right from startups to NASDAQ is having our workloads running on AWS. For the 12th time consecutively, we are the first leader in the AWS cloud market. Okay, so that's as per the Gartner's Magic Quadrant, and you can go and read about that further. Fine. So what brings us there? I want you to go and check that. So AWS is the longest running cloud a magic quadrant leader okay so go and check about it what it makes or what it takes to make it happen fine so now without further ado i'll introduce you to incidents like this there there are some people who had written right day to day we see some news or about some incidents happening in the cloud can anyone tell me what was the latest incident you saw in the newspaper these are little old ones but i've taken them because i love them but how about you? Which is which incident you remember freshly? You read it in the newspaper in the last 15 days, one month or two months' time. Any idea? Anyone? Would you like to respond in the chat? My eyes are there on the screen. Anyone? Which particular incident you saw? Some bank was in the news. Which bank was in the news recently? Any idea? There was an alleged leak that some customer data has been leaked out. It was for HDFC. Thanks a lot, Jorah, for that. So it's not it's being claimed. I'm not sure for that, but you can go and look about it on the CIO, the newspaper article which I'm sharing. You can go and read about it. Okay. HDFC was in the news. Fine. Now, why these two are there and how you can protect that, right? So the first one is about dominoes. I talk about Domino's. This was in way back in 2021 in April, but it's one of my favorite ones. Why so? Almost, almost, right? Almost four crores worth rupees of data was being sell, sold out there. Not only your credit card details were made available, okay? Not only your credit card details were made available, but there was a Tor website which was being put up where I would punch in my mobile number and I could see I ordered Domino's Pizza last Friday at my friend's place with a latitude and longitude. Also, it showed how many orders I did it in last one month or last one year. Even along with the location, which was real scary, I could put it on the map and visualize, oh my God, last three weeks back, I was at work. Before that, I was in some different city. Everything was out visible there on the Tor website, the dark web. Okay. So... Apart from a credit card, why this data is important? Who would love to buy that? Any idea? Who would love to buy that? Who would love to buy your data? Marketing teams. They would love to have such personas. They would love to have a personas. They would love to have Shashank likes to eat this pizza. Okay, I'm starting a brand and I, I know that he's a high spending person. So I can retarget them. So all competitors except Domino's could leverage that. Okay. Every day we have a startup in a food and every other domain, right? So what if your data is sold like this in the dark web? Think about it, right? So targeted advertising. Where yesterday, or I'll just talk about, right? I was looking up for CS benchmarks before I prepared for the session. What happened? When I went to shortly URL, everywhere it was following me along, just like that Vodafone dog. The pup, which comes along with you everywhere, right? So you go on Instagram, you go on YouTube, everywhere I was seeing only one ad. Download CIS benchmarks, download CIS this, that, and so on. The next five days, I'm going to see all the ads which are related to security. Yeah. So this is how they chase you. And this is how you hit the button buy. 
and that's how the cycle gets completed. So it's very important for you to know that um, if anything such things happen, you have to change your passwords. I'm not scaring you, but I'm trying to make you understand why you need to protect your customer's data, why you need to encrypt that. Not only the credit card details, but the personal identifiable information that is PI data has to be protected. Okay, so the next one. Kindness is stream, yes. Okay, the next one is Pegasus Airline. What happened here? Accidentally, one of the bucket was misconfigured and 6.5 TB of data was exfiltrated out. And what was that data containing all about? Personal information about the flight crew, their roster, and even it is being believed that passenger details were being leaked out there. Yeah. So similarly, you would have read about Hilton hotels and so on. Just read about it. Not only your customer data, but everything which was related to your stays and everything was out there. Okay. So all I want to tell you is such incidences could be averted. Let's see how we can do it. And security is not one man's responsibility. It's not your chief information security officer's job alone. It's everyone's responsibility as well. If I'm a developer, yes. If I'm a DevOps person, yes. If I'm into SysOps, definitely yes, because you need to check the configurations. Yeah. So whatever role you are in the organization, you are contributing towards the cloud security posture of your organization. So hence, I am trying to educate or I'm trying to help you out to understand, right? Like how we can do that in the upcoming slides. Now, let's see the next slide. Let's have a look what's in store for us. What does Gartner say? What does Gartner say? Gartner estimates that most cloud security failures will be happening in the cloud. So cloud is secure. We saw the maximum security line which was put up there. But then why it is seeing in the cloud? Can anyone tell me what's this pointing towards? Where are we heading towards? Any idea? What would be my next slide? Or what am I going to talk about? Why does Gartner say? And where does Gartner is pointing towards? No competitor. Not towards competitors. No. At any given point of time, I'm not going to talk about competitor. It's going to talk about this user responsibility mismanagement. Thanks a lot, Sagnik, for that. Okay. So responsibility model. Yes. So what is all about? Gartner is saying the major failures which are going to happen in the cloud is because of the misconfigurations which are going to be done by the customer. So what is in the cloud and what is on the cloud or off the cloud? Let's see that. So I'm going to present you a shared responsibility model. Okay. When you're moving your workloads to the cloud, don't assume 100% security is taken care by AWS only. Yeah. So infrastructure. Infrastructure means my regions, my availability zones, edges, edge locations, points of presence, what do we call it as, right, alternatively. On top of that, I have my core services, compute, database, network, storage, CDNS, right? And on top of it, whatever 200 services I'm doing or giving or offering you, the protection of that infrastructure is taken care of by AWS. But whatever you're going to build onto top of the cloud, right, it is your responsibility. You are responsible for those configurations. So let's see what exactly that means. Okay. So let's see what exactly that means. Okay. I am seeing the charts as a slower rate. Okay. There is a little lag. Perfectly fine. Okay. So if we talk about shared responsibility model team, right? So what exactly we are seeing? What exactly we are seeing? AWS is responsible for the security of the cloud, right? Okay. AWS is responsible for security of the cloud. What does that mean? Where are my regions? Where are my availability zone? In availability zone, where are my data centers? I don't broadcast. We don't say, hey, our data centers are placed here. You can come and pay us a visit. No. They are at discrete locations. To ensure they're highly available, to ensure if there is a power failure, still my availability zones are there. My whole infrastructure doesn't collapse. It's our responsibility. We take care of that. Right? So compute, database, network, and storage, CDNS, which you will hear from me again and again. They are your core services. 
So protection of the entire infrastructure is the responsibility of AWS. And on the top of it, whatever you're going to build is your responsibility. So I give you the example of Domino's customer data. Personal identifiable data was available on the TAR website. Punching in my mobile number, it showed my all orders. It could have been protected. If you are building a platform or if you are using an application which is meant to be on cloud, you need to ensure the configurations are proper. You need to ensure your IAM is proper. That means you don't make everyone as admins. Else there will be an anarchy on your cloud estate. So you need to ensure that, hey, everyone has proper rules and everyone has proper access to uh, resources depending upon their business use case. Principle of least privilege needs to be implemented. What does that mean? A banker, in, I, I take an example of a bank, right? So in a bank, a banker would have a branch manager. In a branch manager would have all access to the bank. But a cashier or a teller would have only access to taking the cash from people and dispensing cash in against a check. You're getting it. At any given point of time, an intern in your IT environment cannot become an administrator if a shadow admin happens and they assume the role of administrator, you need to set alarms. If someone is logging in via root user, which is a God user, can do anything on a cloud environment and it is not meant to be used for daily purpose, daily use, daily work. So then you should set the alarms that someone logged into your root account. You need to enable MFA for such root accounts. That's what all we are going to talk about shortly. If you're using an operating system, you need to update it. You need to ensure what ports are available in your network. Yeah, What ports are open and exposed to people? Port 22 is what? What we do? We SSH, right? What we do? We get into a system. But would you keep it open for entire world? Or you will just keep it open to the IP addresses which are meant for the developers to get into the system? Right? So think about that way. Firewall configuration. You need to ensure how your traffic is coming inside. You need to have use cases how someone is coming into your AWS environment and accessing the workload which is hosted upon that EC2 instance. You need to have that visual flow. Encryption, data integrity, authentication. Encryption is happening at client side. Client wants to do it at their end using their own key. Generally, finance team would love to have the encryption at their end, the key material they will be providing, or they will be ensuring that encryption is happening entirely at the end. They want to have the control at their side. Or you want to do the encryption at the server side. You want to protect the network, how you will protect against DDoS attack and so on. This is what they're going to see shortly. Fine team. So all I want to tell you is anything you build on the cloud, on the top of the cloud, it is you who is responsible for it. And everything which is below and being offered by us, it's our responsibility. Okay. So go and check it out once again. You can read about it. I'll share the links with you. Fine. So now if I proceed to the next slide, so this is what I was talking about, right? So if I talk about AWS, physical security, compute, storage, network, virtualization, everything I'll take care of it. If it's a customer, they are going to take care of this. And together, we want to achieve a state which is a desired state that whatever frameworks are applicable, depending upon my workload and the industry I'm in, I need to be compliant. Okay? And in AWS, you need to understand that depending upon what particular service you're going to take, the controls will be dependent, right? You know that, right? IS, SAS, PASS, right? Okay, so if it is IS, SAS, PASS, you need to understand major controls are dependent upon you. Here, you can only do certain configuration. Here, you can only optimize or tweak it as per your use, right? So that's all about those things. So you need to understand depending upon what kind of service you're going to use and which you're going to select, you need to understand how much you are going to do it. And uh, if you see the word manage service, right? So almost major work is done by us. You can't get into the system. You can't get into the console. You can't update. You can't patch. You don't have to worry about scaling. Only you have to worry about is if you're getting a managed database, you have to just bring your application, tie to that database, start using it, and optimize it. That's all. Yeah? So whenever you see the word managed, you have to understand major work would be taken by AWS. And this is not 90, 10, 50, 50, 60, 40. It depends upon what particular service you're going for. Fine, team? So look for that. Now, 
let's move on to the next slide. AWS compliance. How many of you are working in different domains or how many of you have seen these logos on the websites? Anyone? Have you seen that? What I want to show you is, have you seen these icons anywhere? Whenever you go for a, how many of you buy online on Amazon or any other marketplace, right? You would have seen VRP CIDS has complied. Go to the website food and see these icons will be mentioned there. If you are into medical one, okay? If you are into medical one, HIPAA comes into picture. Look up for that. What exactly that stands for? You will get to know that. Observe is all I tell you. And this is how you learn at a very faster rate. If we talk about GD, uh, GDPR, remember, it, it was a very big thing which had come up in Europe, right? Data privacy kind of thing. Yeah. So GDPR compliance is there. So what do we have in India? We have one regulation. Uh, the RBI has mandated something. What exactly it is? What RBI has mandated? Any idea? HIPAA is for medical compliance. FedRAMP is for US government. Yeah, PCI DSS is for every payment with credit cards. Transactions happening, it has to be there. So what I want to ask you is, RBI has mandated something. Any idea, anyone? Any idea? What was it all about? If you read the news, you would have seen that way back. RBI has mandated all financial transactions happening has to be stored on the servers which are hosted in India, right? So data residency comes into picture. So these all are small, small compliances. You need to, you know, comply with those regulatory agencies across the globe. So there is a one place where exactly you can find all these ones, and that is AWS compliance. Okay. So this is where you inherit the most comprehensive compliance controls with AWS. Depending upon which particular region you are in, based on that, you can adopt. Depending upon what kind of workload it comes into picture, you'll understand. If it is Singapore, it, you will talk about mass. Yeah. So look for these keywords, whatever I'm talking about. Go to this URL, which is awsamazon.com compliance. It's a one-stop shop where you will see PCI DSS. You will talk about NIST. You will talk about HIPAA, FedRAMP, and so on. Okay, so it take it baby steps. All I want to tell you is this is a one-stop place where you will find everything. Okay, now I said you're not allowed to come to our data centers, which we never say data centers. What we say are availability zones and regions. So when I'm not allowing you to come and pay a physical visit, how do you ensure your SOC report is proper? When you want a SOC report, what do you will do? You will go to a portal which is called as Artifact. At AWS Artifact, what is it? It is a one-stop portal again, which is a self-service portal. It doesn't cost you anything. But when you want a SOC report, what is that? Service organization control report. Or whenever you want a PCI report, that is payments, cards, industry reports, right? Whenever you want these SOC reports, all you have to do is go to this particular portal and fetch it out from there. Yeah? So when you want SOC reports, whenever you have an external auditor coming in, they will ask you the SOC reports. You want it, you get it right from here. Fine. Okay. So how does it look like? Let's have a look. So whenever you want is like FedRAM, whenever you want any other ones, CIS, what are CIS benchmarks? We are going to talk about that shortly. Okay. So this is not CIS. This is something cloud computing compliance control catalog, but whatever these are, you will get these artifacts right over here. You don't have to worry about, you don't have to pay anything, and it's a one-stop shop, one self-serve portal for you. Okay, so I showed you two. One is compliance, and second is artifact. Now, with this, what I want to tell you is, team, what I want to tell you is this. Can anyone tell me what exactly this means? What exactly this means? What am I trying to say with this particular slide? Anyone? Custom applications and compliance. AWS had so many, right? But now why am I supposed to do my own certifications, own accreditations, own audits? Why am I supposed to do that? Any idea? Any idea? Why you need to do it when AWS has already done these things, right? Why you need to have your own audits? 
it's written on the screen. If you like to read and give, try to answer, let me know. To be compliant, right? So what I want to tell you is, even if AWS has the certifications means, whatever you're going to build on to top of it, you are not automatically going to inherit that. Applications which are built on the top of the services, AWS services, are not implicitly compliant, okay? You need to certify your applications. You need to have your accreditations. You need to have your own certifications. And you need to engage with external auditors, be from big fours or from any other meaty and paneled ones. You can go for them and get yourself certified. Yeah? So this is a part of the shared responsibility model. It doesn't mean that AWS, using AWS services means I'm automatically everything is done. No. Yeah? So I hope this helps team to make you understand as a part of shared responsibility model, it's together, it happens, right? So it is not only AWS, you also need to take part in it. Cool. So with this, I'll get started with introduction of these frameworks. Everything so far so good. Any questions you have, any feedbacks you have, you want me to go fast, slow, or anything accordingly? Nothing, right? Okay. So far, so good, everyone? Yeah? Okay, none. Cool. Let's have a look now. We are going to introduce you to these three frameworks. Okay? CIS. What is CIS? Where have you seen this? You have been using AWS. Where exactly you would have seen this, team? Where have you seen the CIS? CIS stands for Center of Internet Security, and NIST stands for National Institute of Standard and Technology. They both are based in the United States, and they have launched their own frameworks. Okay? One is voluntary, one is government body. But where you have seen CIS benchmarks? How many of you have an idea about golden images? Golden images. Do you use golden images? Do you launch virtual machines? EC2 instances? How do you ensure they are hardened images? What do you go for? Where do you have seen that? Okay, AMIs, very rightly said. So have a look on my screen, right? Whenever you're launching an EC2 instance, okay? So what do you will do? Will you launch 1000 virtual machines all with different, different settings and configurations? No, you will create one AMI, Amazon machine image. You will create one golden image. Look for this word, what exactly the golden image stands for. Yeah. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to make an app server. Okay. This is my production app server. Now, whenever I'm launching, whenever I'm launching the OS image, I want to ensure that it is a hardened image and it has to be CS benchmark one. So if I don't have people to do it for me, what I can do is I can go to the marketplace yeah, and where you will find it here, where you will find it. If you don't know that, all you have to do is look up for CIS hardened images. Okay, it's not here. Why it's not here? Let's have a look. It has to be here. Okay, so you will go here and find it out. Where are your CIS hardened images? You will find them. And if you don't find them here, right, where you will go? We'll go for something like this. Have a look here. It's here, available on the marketplace. So why it is needed is, basically, I am not going to do those settings which are needed in the virtual machine. If I don't want to do that, as for the benchmark, you can directly go in the marketplace. You can commission it. And all you're going to do is you're going to pay a price for it. That's it. Yeah. So you may not launch Amazon Linux, or you may not go for Mac OS but you will go for a CIS hardened images. So this is where I exactly use it. Now, another work I want to tell you is, you would have seen CIS benchmarks somewhere else as well in some AWS services. Go and have a look. Slowly, I'll unfold that, but try to understand why am I trying to explain you these frameworks would be is, you are consuming them. But once, go and have a look what these frameworks are all about. What are those standards? What are those controls talking all about? And why do we see them in everyday use? And this is how my curiosity helped me deep dive. And this is what I'm trying to show you. Okay. So these are the hardened images, golden images, what do you use? And let's see why exactly we are learning CS 
benchmarks today or we are talking about it okay so this is how people select this and then they launch an ec2 instance right over here i can copy the ami image here and i can look up for that directly okay so i can subscribe and then i can commission it this means all hardening of your ami that is amazon linux 2 is hardened in accordance with the cis benchmark level 1 right so it's going to save your efforts and that's the reason people go for hardened images which are available in the marketplace or you configure it accordingly now let's see what these benchmarks are all about okay so without further ado i'll go back i'll come back now and i'm trying to tell you to build a strong cloud security posture, right? You need a robust cloud infrastructure, which is built over an effective security framework. We have too many frameworks. We have too many standards. We're going to talk about CIS. We are going to talk about NIST CSF. And if you have not already adopted one, I want you to go deep dive and try understanding that. And slowly, I try to explain my experience. I'll give you my experience and where exactly these come into picture. Okay? So I'll be sharing my... Uh, real life journey where you know uh, we have migrated uh, a customer from on premises to cloud and we had created a landing zone for them we had designed security baselines for them and there what do we ask them what what those controls look like so let's have a look shortly okay so first to begin with what is cis benchmark it's a quite texty slide let's have a look what is cis benchmark it is a voluntary framework which comprises of the best practices Earlier, it was meant to protect your only uh, critical systems like IoT sensors or your uh, you know, electricity grid and so on. Fine. But slowly and gradually, it was being applicable, made applicable across all organization. You could be a startup or you could be in a government body. You can apply it. It was meant to ensure there is a common taxonomy to align all organizations' business drivers. There are so many services which are available there. Everyone talks about jargons like, hey, we are, uh, you know, uh, zero. Have you heard about that? Zero. What, what is that? Zero day vulnerabilities. You have heard about those fancy terms, right? All vendors use some fancy terms. They are like, hey, we are using this particular thing. We are doing this. We are doing that. To bring everyone on the same page and to make a layman understand what exactly this means at that particular time, we are having a voluntary framework which helps everyone bring on a same page and thereby improve the cyber security risk management and resiliency of the system now you will be like this is cyber security and why we are talking about in cloud security right yes i will show you where exactly it comes into application i showed you one example we have cis benchmarks which are applicable to the virtual machines images you're going to spin right so let's see what exactly those controls look like and how many controls we have. Fine. So your current year security hub, it supports 1.2 and 1.4.0. It will show you some controls. We'll see that shortly. Let's see a first control. How does it look like? This is how one of the control looks like. It says that ensure SSH root login is disabled. Okay. So it will say what it applies to, what to be done in that case, what is the rational first, how you will audit that? How to audit that? If you have got the customer's console, you can run this command or you can go and you can do it on the console as well. How you will remediate that once you identify you are in a bad shape and how you will refer where we are referring to, which particular control we are referring to. So all of this is available in the CS benchmark. And to make it easy now, when you go into security hub, Whenever you're going to a security hub, you are seeing something like this, CIS, AWS Foundation rules. Where are these rules coming in from? These are coming in from the same benchmark. And hence, I want you to go and download those CIS benchmarks and have a look. I'll show you how to download them, what controls look like. I'll walk, quickly walk you through. But I'm showing you right now, this is how security hub looks like. It has its own compliance standards. These are CIS benchmarks, which are applicable. Few controls are automated. Few controls are manual. Few controls, even if they're automated, they cannot be tested automatically. So you may have to manually intervene and take a call depending upon the customer's environment. At some times, we may have an anti-pattern, but we may fix it by 
you know, uh, doing something. So there is a way around, or there would be some reason or some justification for the customer. So always, if you are not aware why the customer has done it like this, rather than marking an NC, put it for a discussion. And based on the discussion, if they are taking care that a default firewall is not enabled and they have a custom firewall in front of your cloud estate, then you will take that into consideration. So controls are not meant to be applied directly, blatantly, NCNC or compliant is not the game we play. Yeah, you will have to have a work through with the customer. So how do these controls look like? Avoid the use of root account. I did say using root account for day-to-day -day use is not a good thing. Yeah, then principle of least privilege. I did say that, right? So whenever you see that star, which means if I'm granting everything access to you, you're an intern joining my organization. And if I give you access to the all services, right? You may cause anarchy on my system. Yeah, there would be an anarchy happening there. So what you will do? You will be granting people permissions depending upon their role in the organization. Then I did say for 22, you won't allow all incoming traffic from the entire world. You will allow only from the whitelisted IP addresses. So you need to understand these things. And based on that, you need to understand which ports are open, which management ports are open, how many ports are there, why it is open. And there has to be a business case uh, justification along with it. Cool. So I'll now show you. Let me get out of the slides and I'll show you how exactly I am downloading that. So just give me a second team. I'm coming back here. I'll be sharing this link to you. Okay. All this links, whatever I'm going to share with you today is available out here. So try not panicking. Try not asking. Right. Wait for it. I'll share it as and when we are going to do that. Right. Okay. So firstly, I'm going to do is a CS benchmark download. I want to see what exactly they are. So all you have to do is click on it and open it in a new tab. You will be routed to the downloads page of CIS Benchmark. Whatever cloud provider you are with, or if I directly want to say, I want to go to AWS and I want to see what are the benchmarks, I can go and download it here. Fine. All you have to do is download the PDF and it will show you the benchmark. Okay. Now, I want you in your spare time to go and see what exactly these controls look like. Likewise, I said root user, right? So it says root users should not be used for day-to-day -day purpose. Root users should not be allowed to log in. If you have the access key in secret, you need to remove that. Yeah, you need to set alarms if in case someone is using it. That is additional I'm saying, but the control says you need to audit this. If you're doing it from the console, you can do it. Baby steps by following that, you can do that. Or else you can go in the command line and you can run this. And if there is a root account, it will show something else. It will say account access present is zero. It even helps you understand and interpret what exactly it does mean, right? So this is how you can mark a control compliant and not compliant. Fine. Okay, team. So go for such controls, please. Go and look about it. Yeah. And then it will show you even the version 8, version 7, and so on, right? I am telling you, you can really enjoy reading about this. And then when you start using Security Hub and our AWS services, you'll understand what exactly this control means. So now I'm getting back to the top of the page. Just give me a second. I'll take another control. OK, I'll have to scroll up. Just give me a second. Just give me a second, please. OK, so which services are scoped in? Have a look here. Yeah, so these are the services where your CS gets applied. Fine. So you can go here and check and read about this. Cool. And if you have any issues or anything to understand, let me know. I'll be happy to help you out. OK, security is enabled. If it is automated, if it is manual, everything is mentioned out here. And these are the controls. What do you see in that PPT I showed you? OK. So understanding if your control is not compliant, what am I supposed to do if it is manual? What am I supposed to do if it is automated? Am I automatically remediating it or am I going to do it manually? You will understand these things. VPC flow log is one of the very important thing. You want to understand how does your traffic is going east, west, north, south. Try to look up for that. What is that I said about? 
What is your internal traffic? How is your external traffic going? How is your traffic inside the system or inside your network? If there is any anomaly happening, how do you identify that? For that, you need to have VPC flow logs enabled, and only then the guard duty will be able to tell you some anomaly activity is happening there. But the first thing is what? You need to enable the VPC flow logs. Yeah, you need to enable it. You need to keep it. Uh, uh, you need to keep those logs for a certain amount of time. And a, tr a word of caution: if you keep it, uh, you know, for a long amount of days, you're going to store it for a long amount of time. You're going to pay a storage cost and so on. So deep dive into that. Yeah, deep dive. How how many days you want to keep? What is a re retention policy? Right, as per your organization, look for those things, team. Yeah. So this is how you know these are the very basics. And this is how you need to do it. Yeah. And uh, Krishna Chaitanya was asking, can I build a golden images in AWS using AWS provided images? You can use AWS provided uh, images or you can bake your custom image using your AMI image builder. Yeah. And then what you can do is you can go here and you can go for uh, just a second. Just a second. I'll show you the virtual machine, right? If you're launching your own virtual machine, just give me a second. I'll show it to you here. If you're spinning your own EC2 instance and you want to uh, improve the security of it, you can do that by following it here. Just give me a second. Yeah, it's over here. See this. Whatever operating system you're going, right? If it is for Mac OS, if it is for Linux, if it is for any other operating system, there are these benchmarks given. And based on that, you can select. If you're selecting Red Hat, you can set your own controls and you will have to harden your VM on your own. Okay. So these are the different controls for that. Fine. So have a look. This controls will be different. Your partition keys, your temp folders, your audit logs, your dev folders, all these things have to be taken care of. Your partitioning has to be taken care of and so on. Right. So if you are willing to create your own AMI image and you want to harden it, you can do it by following those benchmarks which are available. Here. Fine. I hope this helps team to you understand what is CIS and where you are going to see them. You're going to see them when you're creating AMI, when you're going to use Security Hub, which is a service, and to understand when it says you're not compliant. What does it mean? You want to see that? Go here, download that, look for that control, and read in depth about it. Yeah. And then when you want to see how exactly I can do it on AWS. There is a link which is given, developer guide, which will take you to there and it will tie you back, right? So you will understand how to enable VPC flow logs on AWS. Cool. Okay. You want the link. I'll give you this link itself. Uh, I'm pasting it in the private chat, requesting the backend team to put it there so that everyone gets it. Yeah. I have shared it. It will be short, shortly flashed to you. And this is a link where exactly you will be getting all my links I'm going to share, right? These all links are stacked here. Now, I'll come back to our PPT and we'll talk about NIST. I did tell you about NIST, that is National Institute of Standards and Technology, right? So here also what we have is we have another framework. So it has a core function. What core functions you see? It has five core functions. It says identify, protect, detect, respond and recover whatever you identify you're going to protect that whatever you detect you're coming back in the loop and you're going to protect if you detected something is going wrong in your system you're going to protect that you're going to respond to that automatically triage should happen okay and then if your system was under cyber attack and you want to recover how would you recover that's what we are going to look okay so these are five these are five core functions. We are going to deep dive shortly. So have a look here. The first one is identify. So what are you going to identify? You're going to identify what are you going to protect? You're going to protect as data, application, network, people, and your capabilities. So that's what I'm going to protect. So you're going to identify those things. What am I going to ident identify? The inventory I'm going to set on. How many applications I have, right? How am I going to protect the network? How am I going to protect my devices and so on? Yeah. So how am I going to protect that? Protecting. So have you attended phishing, uh, you know, phishing related trainings on in your system? 
in your organization, you would, you would be getting cyber awareness once, right? Uh, don't click on these emails. Don't click on this links. Don't do that. Don't do this. Threat modeling uh, uh, trainings would be made mandatory for you. Some trainings would be made mandatory so that you're aware of what is happening in today's world. Yeah. So that's how we are trying to get you aware and we're trying to protect that. Then even we'll be protecting our network infrastructure. So we'll see that. So once we try to protect anything comes in your system, any anomaly activity is detected, how are you going to protect it? How are you going to trigger automatic remediation? Automatic triage has to happen. How are you going to do that? That will be the part of response. And then you're going to repair those things which were impaired during your cybersecurity event, right? So this is how it's a loop. Identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover. It goes in a cyclic loop, something like this, yeah? It is a continuous monitoring and protection. If you find anything, you're going to do as a threat remediation and response. You will deploy your business and critical applications. You will always continue proactively to you know, monitor and focus upon your critical issues. And you will leverage comprehensive set of APIs and technologies. Now, whatever you are seeing here, I'm translating that to AWS services and NIST. You would have heard about these services but these services are intentionally packed together. Yeah. So systems manager is for your operation and maintenance. Config, it checks whether your uh, services, EC2 instance is enabled with the SSM role or not. If anyone are not allowed to keep their S3 buckets open, if you do that, you can track all those things, your change management then config, right? Your detect will come into picture. I give you example of VPC flow logs. Anything is going wrong. At that time, your guard duty will identify using machine learning. Macy will help you identify if there is a PII data or someone has accidentally stuffed keys and you know it's leaked out there. Macy will help you identify that. Inspector will help you identify if you are deviating from the best practices and uh, if there is any vulnerability score and so on. You will see all about those things there. Security Hub is one-stop shop you will see, right? How you are going to protect that? You're going to place WAF, you're going to place shield. Shield is for your shield and shield advance for your DDoS attacks, right? So these services, we are going to cover that. But what am I going to tell you is identify, protect, detect, respond, recover. This is intentional. This is how these services are commissioned and your automatic triage workflows should come into picture. CloudWatch is meant for what? Meant for proactive monitoring, cloud trail, post mortem analysis, identifying what went wrong, who did that. Yeah. Okay. So, cloud watch again, and you have this lambda for auto remediating. S3 bucket, someone kept it open, kill it. Config is there. There is an uh, event stream notification happening. You trigger lambda and you go and kill that one S3 bucket, right? Okay. And backups, we talk about there are services which are there in the backup and how you are preparing yourself for any disaster which strikes you. So now whenever you see AWS, all these security services, you need to identify why they are placed up in this particular form and why we learned about NIST, yeah? Why we learned about these five functions. Team, so far so good, everyone. Are you on same page with me? Why I introduced this framework to you and why I brought you here? Is that clear to you? Everyone, a quick plus one in the chat. Just confirm me, help me out to understand whether you are getting it, right? Okay. You're getting it, right? Fine. Now, I want to tell you a scenario when I was working with a customer and this customer had too big amount of budget, right? Everyone, what they use? Hey, I want native firewall. I want native services. I want native CASB. I want this. I want that and so on. But now, what if the customer has so many, so many... What if this customer has so many uh, tools available out there? So let's see this application of, you know, let's see this application of uh, an IST framework once again, right? So I'll keep it interactive. Just give me a second. I'll try to keep it interactive. A uh, minute, please. I'm trying to find out my browser as well. Uh, what am I trying to do is I'm trying to show you an application of when you are coming to cloud, how am I going to use an IST, right? How am I going to use an IST? So let's have a look. Cool. Just give me a second. I'm just getting started. Yeah. So what, what did we see? What are the core five functions of NIST? Can anyone put it in the chat? 
which are the core five functions what what did we see what was it identify what was it identify then protect right detect yeah response yeah respond and then what recover right and then what did i tell you what did i tell you what are you going to protect you are going to protect whom you are going to protect devices you are going to protect your application you are going to protect your network yeah you are going to protect your data you are going to protect your users fine so this is the application of nist i am trying to show you when a customer has large amount of tools they are like mere ko saas chahiye dash chahiye i want vulnerability scanners i have is like sims i have sore something different edrs you would have heard about right edrs would be installed on a systems right to protect you from endpoint protect those endpoints your laptops right when you are getting into your system from some other device what do you do you connect via vdi right so now can you tell me how would you apply this nist here can anyone tell me what am i going to do here okay what am i going to do i am going to do is a mapping fine team so let me do one thing i had done a nice handwriting of mine i'll edit this yeah okay i am here so what we have is identify protect this detect respond and recover right devices how are you going to protect the devices how are you going to protect the devices do you do you install vulnerability scanners yeah have you heard about something like that vulnerability scanners being installed big fix heard about those things right then how are you going to protect or how are you going to identify something is going wrong in the application how are you going to protect the application how are you going to protect the application how are you going to see something is going in the application which is wrong what kind of test happens at the developer end before it gets into the pipeline what do you do static code analysis sast yeah and then what do you do dast as well once your application is live you try to do these things yeah so sast and dast testing everything this is how you do that so you need to understand if in a cyber security these are my tools then okay these are the tools which are going to protect me now how are you going to identify something is going wrong in your network what do you do what do you do you see net flows right you see your vpc flow logs yeah how are you going to protect your data how are you going to protect your data how do you classify data sensitive not sensitive right yeah so what do you do is data audit and classification high medium low is it sensitive or not and so on right so what am i going to do is i'm mapping the services in your cyber security landscape you need to understand these all things are going to be done by these tools so what are the white spaces which i am supposed to take care on cloud yeah encryption of data yes but i won't identify that right i won't I, in identification i won't put i'll put encryption here i'm protecting my data by encrypting it getting it so i'm encrypting that have you heard about drm when does drm come into picture drm are you able to download songs from spotify no right yeah so look for that what exactly the drm is all about then what is dlp heard about dlp what is dlp all about send a client data from a email address company email address to somewhere out what will happen it will get immediately blocked it will raise a ticket right it will say sensitive data was being sent across and they will ask you a justification why you were sending the client data out data leak prevention this is how you will protect that team okay yeah so how you will protect identify users first so you will do is phishing simulations i'll send accidental links to you 
I'll check whether you are aware of it or not. I want to do simulations. I am going to do awareness trainings among you. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Then what am I going to do? How am I going to protect the network? Heard about firewalls, right? So firewalls will come into picture here. Then we'll talk about IPS and IDS here. Then applications. Have you heard about WAF? So where does WAF come here? WAF is meant to protect your application. So you will place your WAF here. If the customer is not using the WAF of the native cloud, then do they have their own WAF? Check for that. And then say whether they're compliant or not. Yeah. And then how are you going to protect the devices? You will have antivirus on them. You will have IAM policies. IAM will come in everywhere here. Okay. IAM will come everywhere here. If you have FireEye or you will have some endpoint, go into your system and check what is your endpoint detection and response EDR. It will be installed on your system. When there is a DDoS attack happening on your system, we say enable shield, enable this. DDoS mitigation is a part of detect and respond. Something is detected in your system and you're going to protect that. Yeah. Okay. So that's where your DDoS comes into picture. Your DRM, that is your digital rights management, it comes here as well. Someone downloaded from Spotify, but you can't see that. Yeah. You can't download and listen to that from your phone normally without the app. Data protecting that, we say take backups, backups, backups. So that backups comes here. Your AWS backup services, you will leverage that to take backups. It's your responsibility. Now you see the application recovery. What do you do? You parallelly run uh, active active, right? Or active passive. You have a parallel site running in case of disaster when it strikes. So that sometimes it could be taken by the cloud or it is taken done by you. So you have to check this. Network, we say AWS runs on its network. We never talk about redundancy. We never talk about high availability. We never talk about those things. Who takes care? AWS. Yeah. So these white gaps are your part. You need to identify that. Are this taken care? Users gone. Once they are gone, gone. Can you recover them? You can't. So this is not applicable. Devices. Once it gets lost, you, would you be able to recover? No, this is not applicable for me right now. So team, you need to understand cloud controls. You need to understand the client's landscape or your own landscape, how these tools are placed where exactly my control comes in, if my control is not applicable or applicable, if it is not compliant, then does client have a firewall, something installed of their own? Yes, then ask them these questions. And this is how you can make a five by five matrix, apply your NIST knowledge and see how exactly your cloud estate or your landscape it looks like. And this is how you can happily stay with your CISO team, Chief Information Security Officer, and your CCOE team, which would be Center of Cloud Excellence team and so on. Your application team and your infra team also, you all will be on same page if you do this activity. Yeah, and this is called as Cyber Defense Metrics. Cool. I hope this helps, right? Yeah. So this is all about an application of NIST. Now, where do I go and read about NIST and what these controls are all about? So I'll take you to that link once again. Let's have a look. Yeah. So this is where you can read about this particular white paper, aligning to NIST CSF in the cloud. So click on it. It's updated last October 2021, yeah? But read about it. It will tell you everything which is needed. And all the domains are covered. Which services will come into it? Which services are aligned? How we align as AWS with CSF? You will understand these things. I did say it started with healthcare financial, but CIS and NIST both are being used. Now you'll be like, Shashank, there are so many other frameworks. How do I remember them? Yeah. How do I remember them? How do I cram them? You don't have to do that. Go to AWS Security Hub website or AWS website. You'll see all these controls listed there. 
but i want you to read this white papers which will help you for the deep dive correlate the way i showed you and then you can leverage those services to your truest potential kind of right okay so with this i hope this helps team i'll close all the tabs i want you to go and look about these things yeah and if not i'll show you this way aws and isd there will be a dedicated page have a look you if you don't want to read the framework you want to see the controls you can download this will give you an excel file it will show you that it will show you all the controls you need to work on it will show you the partners who can do it for you it can show you how you can leverage using this quick tools yeah and everything could be automated the controls could not be automated then what they are everything is clearly mentioned out there you don't have to worry about this fine how you will consume this how you will align yourself this is a white paper which is available here and i've already given it to you in the link cool so this is how you can go slowly and gradually and if you want to see one one control each and i see aws controls look for something like that yeah and have a look it's given here best practices for nist 500 yeah so have a look all these controls will be given here and all frameworks would be listed here so which framework comes into yours you are into hipa you will go for hipa you are into germany there is something for german yeah so go and have a look see these all frameworks are listed here in my today's capacity i can't cover all of them yeah and uh, sim and soar uh, someone is asking where they will fit in sim and soar are meant for um, i'll come back here again just give me a second i'll take that query yeah i hope this helps these are the best practices go and have a look read about this domains everything and this is exactly coming in from that white paper yeah cool and on github you can go and look for this i'm coming back here i'm taking one query in between that is for devanshi i'm seeing it a little late it comes slowly for me yeah so sim and soar where it, where it will come where will come your sim and soar can anyone tell me where will your sim and soar come here where your sim and soar will come at my users end i detect something is going wrong here so if i'm using splunk i'll be placing it here and if i want to auto remediate it i'll put my soar here and it will auto remediate it it will even come somewhere here i want you to check that and apply accordingly okay so i left that open question for you i hope that helps devanshi yeah so look for this list down all the tools which are in your cyber security landscape start plotting it this way yeah and you will be able to understand what are the white gaps you need to fix it and these are your white spots you have to definitely focus upon team cool with this i'm done with nist framework as well have any questions for me let me know i have a quick glance on the screen and else i'll start with the another one that is mitre framework any other questions for me anything anything any i hope this is fine with you right everyone yeah all good so far so far so good right okay now we are going to talk about we are going to talk about what mitre framework cool why this mitre framework was needed and how can i exactly use it yeah every day there is someone who is doing something new how am i supposed to protect my cloud how am i able to keep up that right you want to do those things you can so that is where your mitre framework will come into picture mitre framework something that looks like this i'll show you shortly but what does this attack stands for advisable tactics techniques procedures and common knowledge so i generally call it as tactics techniques and procedures okay so it's going to show me the attack paths how someone is going a bad actor is going to get into my system and how is he going to bombard me so red teams generally use this yeah but why we are going to use it we are going to use it to ensure that we have our defensive efforts we are ready to detect prevent those attacks and we can recalibrate if needed we have 14 tactics 193 techniques and 401 sub techniques let's see what tactics are first yeah what those tactics are let's have a look at it 
So these are the tactics. We have some tactics which will be shown on the screen. The first one, initial access. So what I do is I'm primed to use the stolen credentials to create a new account in a system. Bob one, Bob two, Bob three. Someone is creating that. Are you identifying those users are not in a system? Someone is using that stolen credentials to create a new account. Once I created that account, I'm able to get into your system and gain those credentials to AWS. So basically, I am now into almost a system and I'll try to maintain my foothold there. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll maintain my foothold remotely. Then there's privilege escalation. I'll stay dormant for a certain amount of time, but after that, I'll try to be from a normal user to I'll try to become a root user. I try to change, elevate my permissions. If that happens, alarms has to ring is what I've been telling you again and again. Defense evasion. Someone created a new virtual machine to bypass the firewalls. You need to understand that. You need to understand these things that someone did that. And someone stole your credential access to the database. After what they had an access to your target database, they start discovering what kind of data I can exfiltrate. And once I do that, I start moving inside a system. I start collecting whatever I have. And then I start exfiltrating that. And slowly, I try to have control over you. You would have run, heard about, you know, IoT pipelines, IoT-driven pipelines, supplying the all, they were shut down. Someone was attacking them. They had to be shut down for a few days. Yeah. So what happened? Someone sniffed the credentials. Someone got into your system. Someone took the control. Someone started moving across your, uh, you know, cloud estate. Started identifying how big your estate is. Started identifying what are the important databases. Exfiltrate the data and then muscle flex you. Pay me this much money else you can't use the system and remotely control you. Yeah. And sell your data outside. That's another thing. Yeah. So this is what happens when someone is coming into your system. These are your tactics. How they get into your system are techniques. And those techniques also have sub techniques. We'll see that. So I'm trying to show you this. Don't be scared. Mitre attack framework is available for enterprise systems. It's also available for the cloud. For the cloud, it is a small subset which I'm showing you. So initial access, I get into your system. Then I execute some commands. Then I try to stay there low without getting detected. Then once I'm able to stay there for a few days, I'm trying to escalate my privilege. And then I am trying to evade all your, the tools which I talked about, right? They're not able to sniff my presence. And then I'm trying to steal some credentials. I'm trying to discover what all I have. I'm trying to do little movement across the system, exfiltrate that data, and then hit you badly and lock you up. And I do resource hijacking and so on. This happens in the cloud. How you want to see it, you can see this. You can visualize this. No longer do it on Excel. Do it this way. You would have heard about APT and so on. All those things, you can see it using this. I'll show you shortly the website where exactly I've got this screenshot from. Now, if you are a senior person who is running on a container, major people read those cheat sheets, how to do it for containers. But if you visualize it, how someone gets into your container and how someone can attack you, so this is how you can apply it. I'll run you through this very shortly. How many of you have heard about solar winds? How many of you have heard about solar winds? Anyone? Solar winds. What had happened for solar winds? What was happening? It did impact major organizations. It did all have. Uh, give me a second. I'll I'll try to show it to you. Have a look. Okay. about this what had happened everything you need to know look up for this what had happened okay someone had injected the malicious code right itself in your github which means it went even till the production and it survived there for months and months until then it was exfiltrating data from all those impacted organizations including the US government so I want you to read about these things Okay, so how they got into it, you can do that. You can map those indicators, how they possibly could have done. You read the article and then you can see how they got initially accessed, what execution they did, what was the persistence and so on. 
This is how using tactics, techniques, procedures, you can visualize how someone could get into your system. Cool. So I'll show you this. I have, I have shared the link with you. Let me do one thing. Just give me a second. Have a look. I have shared one link with you. If you click on this, it will show you what is MITRE ATT&CK Navigator. Now, I want to create a new layer. I'm creating a new layer. I'm doing it for enterprise. Yeah, you can go and play around with it. Okay, so all your tactics are here. All your techniques are here. And in all techniques, there are sub techniques. Now, what I want to tell you is whenever you read and, uh, you know, APT 9, APT 29, APT 23 has done this, done that. Don't know those buzzwords. All you have to do is go here and look for it. I'm like, APT interested in APT 29, what exactly did or how they got into the system? Is there anything for APT 29? No. So I'm doing this for APT 3. No. So I'm doing it APT 3. Have a look. It's there. APT 3, right? So have a look. It is showing. You were getting into the system by exploiting for the client execution and the account manipulation was happening. So I select this. Okay. So I'm selecting this. So I'm clicking on it. It will show me what exactly it was a China based one, whom it did target to, how they did target to, and what are the associated groups and what all techniques were used. That's how you can get into the baby steps and you can deep dive into it. Okay. So any group you would have heard, Lazarus group, it was very one of the good ones in the news. APT 29, APT 39, APT 3, they are frequently heard about and talked about. You can find that how people get into it. How they're getting into my system. Yeah. How they're getting into my system. So this is how they're getting into my system. So I can select that and I can see those things. Yeah. So it shows me those things. And then you can create multiple layers like that. You can create a multiple layer like that. Here I'm doing it for APT something else. So let me take APT. APT. Yeah. 39. So I'm selecting that. Have a look at selected 33 one. Yeah. I can put colors into it. Yeah. I can put here something. Okay. Now intersection of these two also, I can do that by creating another layer. I'll create another layer and there I'll put the expression A equals to B, A plus B. And then it will merge these two layers and it will show you how you can how someone is getting into a system. So you want to see the threat actor getting into a system, how they get into it, how they execute, how they persist, what are those things? You can replicate that. So when you read some articles and they mention those codes, look up here, come and try to emulate that and you will have absolute fun understanding how you could have done better. Yeah. So again, once again, I've shared this link with you and I hope this helps to understand the theory part now translated into how people get into a system. Cool. Now I'll show you uh, another link. Give me a second. So you can play around with this attack navigators. Now let me take you through another PDF. Okay, I have shared that with you, the most top 10 prevalent ones. So this is by some organization, they have shared it on their website. So you want to see what is MITRE around, what are the top 10, so you can just go and look for top 10. Have a look. These are the top 10 attack techniques, the way people have been trying to get into your systems. So now you can go and see how I can protect this when I am on cloud, how I, I can you know run controls for this and I can protect. So you can go and click on it. You can see how they do it. Yeah. How you're impacted, which particular services will come into action, how you can protect and so on. Cool team. This is all application about MITRE framework and I hope this helps. So far, so good. I have been talking around. Just tell me if this helps, right? So this link is also given to you. You can have a look. What is MITRE framework? You can get started with that and it will help you understand in deep dive. You don't know anything about it. You can start from scratch. Read about it slowly and gradually. What techniques are, what tactics are, what are your procedures? So I showed you this, right? So you can see these things over there. 
So read about this and then go to the attack navigator and read one or two articles, look about how they were impacted and then try to create your own, your own indicator, which is what I was showing you this. Yeah, so this is how I did it. This is my perception of how SolarWinds was being hacked or how the system was compromised and you are mapping those indicators to MITRE framework. If this looks good, now we are proceeding towards our last phase where I'm going to talk about is your workloads are now moving towards your landing zone and I'm going to ask you one question. Are you well architected? Answer would be yes. We are ready to go to fraud, but you need to check, have you implemented the best practices? How many of you know the six pillars? Anyone, any idea? Have you read about those six pillars? Do you know what those six pillars are? Yeah, I just flashed it here on screen. So what are those six pillars? The first one is security. What do we say? You need to apply security at all years. I have been talking about principle of least privilege, PLOP. You need to give only the access to the people depending upon the business case. Animal MFA for all users and specifically for the privileged ones. Cost optimization. Yeah. So whenever you are creating new services, you need to assign tags to them. You need to stop guessing the capacity. You need not to provision a big server and you need to start with smaller one, use cost-effective resources. Reliability, recover from failure. You need to have recovery procedures. You need to scale, increase your availability. Yeah, And then we are going to talk about this performance efficiency. We are going to talk about is how we are going to reduce the latency. Gone are those days where people are like, your website is loading, 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 that flash icon comes, right? No more there. Use serverless as much as possible. Serverless, what does that mean? Server exists, but you don't have to provision it. You're going to pay for only what you're going to use. So you seldom pay for your idle servers. You're going to do is incorporating monitoring, proactive monitoring. Just not like a Bollywood movies that you call police and it comes an hour later. Till then, your lot of data will get exfiltrated, right? So you have to proactively monitor and you have to ensure within minutes or seconds, you need to automatic triage should begin. Operation excellence. If you're doing one activity once, you should automate it. If you're doing it more than once, you should automate it. Yeah, we talk about infrastructure as code. One virtual machine, you're spending two, three, four, hundred. After doing hundred, you forget that, hey, I didn't create a security group. Would you go back and do that? Not possible. Dev stage prod, want to do the same thing again and again. Save your clicks. Leverage infrastructure as code. Use cloud formation. Sustainability is the newest pillar which has come up. You need to understand your workloads which are coming on AWS. You need to understand the impact, how much carbon footprints is going to come. M maximize the utilization. If you have over provisioned your EC2 instances, then you need to understand that you can put Start with smaller ones and you ensure you're maximizing the utilization of it. Please be, uh, you know, environment conscious is what I say and your workloads, whatever activity it runs, it does have some carbon footprint tied to it. So look for it. Yeah. So these are all our pillars with they look like. Now, these pillars are available as a part of a well-architected framework. So if you're new to cloud or if you have been working on cloud since long, if you know this bit, this six pillars and the best practices, it's really easy for you to understand how to implement and why to configure the services. Once you know what a framework wants, what a standard and control demands, and once you understand the well-architected framework, you will automatically start configuring the services properly. So let's go through uh, every pillar. I'm trying to show you every pillar. It has its own resources. You will have a labs, you will have a reference materials, you can do everything there. Okay, well architected framework, it has a tool also available. This tool, it comes along with your lenses. These lenses, if you are into uh, IoT sensors, if you're into healthcare, if you're into data analytics or streaming media, hybrid networking, these are the lenses which are meant depending upon what kind of your workload is. All you have to do is bring your application connected to your well-architected tool, all you're going to do is you're putting a question and answer there. And you're going to select the lens which is applicable to you. Based on your selection, it will ask a question and answers. You will fill that. 
you alone are not responsible or meant to fill it you along with the team need to understand what exactly how you have configured it how your application is going to fit on the landing zone what ports are open what particular management ports are open how is your firewall configured these would be the questions have you taken care of backup how you are going to take you know how you are uh, going to take periodic backups all these questions let's have a look we'll see that shortly so this is how the map looks like all those six pillars are there yeah i'm just going to zoom on the security part so these are the controls which are coming as a part of the security pillar so we'll try looking at that around so first what i'll do is i'll take you to the console i'll show you the tools i'll show you the pillars i'll then run you through the tool and then we'll see that q and a part we'll try to fill one or two and we'll see how exactly it gives me recommendations and i need to fix it yeah and this is how it looks like before i take you it will i'll go to this tool i'll say this is my workload i'll define it and i'll go through all these pillars filling the question and answers and when i'm defining the workload it will look something like this and when i'm in the security these would be the controls which would be asked to me all i have to do is have i implemented it or not the answer is yes and no there is no maybe if you don't know you can mark it or you can keep it for your review and then you can fill it later but don't mark a strong yes there don't take a guess if you are not aware and you want to invite someone who can fill it you can do that this is a real big questionnaire and you can't do it every time in one sitting you can set your milestones okay so we'll see those things very shortly and that's all about the well architected tool so let uh, let let me uh, fire up my browser and i'll show you those things just give me a second team trying to locate my browser okay new tab yeah i got it so this is my shoreby yes this is my shoreby link yeah so what am i going to do is first i'm going to show you this six pillars okay so what are those pillars this is a blog i want to read about yeah it will help you understand what these pillars are what are the design principles what are the best practices you need to do fine i am going to go in the security pillar white paper this is the best thing you need to read about you will understand how to configure and you know how exactly it gets applied fine okay so this is a one of the things i want you to read about and then i'm going to show you there are a well architected labs so basically if i want to learn about security i want to read more about it or i want to do some hands on labs so then these are the labs which are meant available to you level 100 for starters 200 for intermediate 300 for advanced and you have some quest as well so you can do this quest and you can deep dive into security now i wanted to show you the tool so this is the tool which is there this tool is not entirely automatic you have to define things in there you have to define the workload i want you to have a look about this and then you proceed with the labs further cool so i'll walk you through the tool now let me log in into my system okay this is my well architected tool i'm going to first define a workload so i am saying this is my uh, production workload for finance app assume i'm just giving like that i am the owner it is on pre production environment ideally it is good to do it for your workloads which are in a pre production and then you hit it production right which regions they are in you select those regions so i'm selecting it would be in for me for us west 1 and uh, i say us east 1 let me assume that i'm selecting that what are the account numbers so i'm giving some account number which is random something yeah i'm just giving a random number yeah and then it is asking me the application arn i don't know i don't have it handy it's perfectly fine what industry type i am in based on that 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 particular lens will come into picture so if i am from healthcare i'll have that particular one available yeah so i'm selecting this i'm a consumer and then i'm selecting activate trusted advisor this is your buddy who's a friend who's going to tell you everything and there will be a role which is created for it and additional setup may be needed you can go and look into the documentation part 
Now I'm selecting next. Okay, it says not allowed to go further without this. So I'm saying demo purpose. I'm just putting this. And who is the owner? So I'm putting it. My Gmail address. And I'm hitting next. Right? So see, it says what lenses are applicable. Well architected one. Now, if I say my serverless, uh, my application is running on serverless, I want to apply this. You can do that as well by selecting it. Only thing is your questions will get increased, but don't worry about that. All I want to tell you is you'll be safe and sound when your applications are running on. So I'm deselecting this right now. I'm just selecting the well-architected framework. Okay. So this will give you those questions. You need to pre-fill that. You need to fill that. And based on that, it will start telling you whether you are compliant, not compliant, and what are high, medium, and low risk for you. Okay. So there are 58 questions for me to fill. Ideally, practically not possible. We'll be able to do that today. So what am I going to do is I'm jumping directly to the security pillar, right? I'm selecting the first one. What it says, how do you securely operate a workload? Yeah. The easiest option is this doesn't apply to me. Not a good thing to do. I'll have to give a justification for that, whether it is out of scope, business priorities, architecture constraints, or other. So I'm selecting, I'm securing AWS account, identify, I'm keeping update to the recommendations, and I'm doing this, okay? I'm only doing these things. Now, now, against this, I'm given, these are the resources you can use. You want to see what is the control tower all about? We are going to talk about it in upcoming uh, sessions, but I'm just telling you, you want to learn about those things, you can go and click here. I am, I'm going to take uh, uh, in the upcoming sessions. You want to read about the best practices, you can go and have a look here. So regarding this particular question, that is question one, these are the resources which are made available to you and how you can secure your workloads using accounts, how you can secure your account. This is how you can read here and you can leverage resources. Okay, team. So I'm not sharing these links. All you have to do is go here, fire it up, and then start looking up what all resources are made available. So my first question is done. And if I'm not aware of, I can go for ask an expert. Yeah. And for this question, there will be trusted advisor checks, which will be running on my accounts. So right now it is running. So let it be. I'm showing you the another control. Okay. How do you manage identities for people and machines? So when you will use roles, when you will use temporary credentials, when you want to give temporary credentials, how do you do it? How do you do cross account access? Have you enabled MFA or not? Are you rotating the credentials periodically or not? Are you storing your secrets securely or not? Secrets are parameter store. So all those things will come here. And at that time, these resources change and you can read about them. So similarly, when you start filling these things, yeah, so I'm selecting the last second one. Data in transit, what does that mean? Whenever your data is in transit, at that time, you need to protect it. What you will have? You'll have HTTPS enabled. The padlock icon, what you see always here in the bank. Yeah. So those things are meant. Even you, there are certain controls. You're enforcing encryption in transit. So those things are over here. So if you read those white papers which I showed you and those frameworks, you'll understand these things very easily. What is encryption in transit? What is encryption at rest? When you're storing something in S3 or DynamoDB, at that time you are enforcing encryption on its own. Which tools will come into picture? These are the tools which come into picture. S3 I talked about. EBS volume encryption, it comes into picture. RDS and where you are going to save your key material or where you're going to store your keys. Who is going to store it? Who is going to rotate it? You or me? All those things also you will understand as and when you will go through these questions. Okay? So try reading these things and try understanding. And once you are done, do save and exit. It will tell me, see, for one control, I'm at high risk. If you fill this fully diligently, it will show you, hey, you're doing these things wrong. And buddy, you need to fix it. And you can even save your milestones, baby steps. And you can say beta release and so on. And you can hit it. And you can invite someone also. And you can fill it together or ask them to fill it for you. Okay. And if you have an architecture diagram, it's always good. Major people, they have diagrams, but their architecture implemented on cloud, there is a drift. Those drift detection is what is our work when we are doing the security 
review. And hence, it's always better to have a diagram handy. Your architecture has to be in sync with it. Also, your backup and DR process has to be updated, right? You're doing frequent changes on the cloud, but you are not backing up frequently, or you never tested how does your DR work. You never tested that. And then something goes wrong and you're trying to recover, you realize, man, the last time we tested was four years back. And after that, we have done so many architecture changes. So neither my backup is in place, neither my DR is in place, and nothing is working fine. Yeah. So these things are very important. Try to have your architecture diagram always in handy. Um, always have your stakeholders in place. Your CISO team, your CCOE team, your application team, your lift and shifting team, the team which is doing the heavy, uh, you know, uh, uh, migration uh, part, they never know these basic, basic details. They don't know the frameworks. They won't see also how landing zone looks like. For them, it's all about port number, de dia, match, karo, update, karo, and you know, like just dump the data, do this, do that, and so on. They will follow what you are doing it, right? So hence, it's very important that when you're coming to cloud, you have a technical design document in place. You have a technical design document in place. You first begin with taggings. You first begin with how your applications look like what stack it is being built upon, and how your application is talking to infra, how many virtual machines you have, how are you going to bring them to cloud? So what are those seven hours? You need to know that, yeah? So are you going to do is like rehosting, refactoring is supposed to be done? Are you going to do is lift and shift mechanism and then leverage the benefits of cloud? Or are you going to buy a entire new SaaS application itself entirely? Or you're going to let it run on premises for a certain amount of time and then retire it? So look about these things. This will help you to understand, uh, you know, the basics of uh, our uh, security pillar, uh, these frameworks, and then slowly, as and when we introduce these services to you, you will be like, "Hey, man, yes, I remember here. Told me PLOP." So it comes when we are discussing an IAM. When we are talking about control tower, you will see those things. When you see a security hub, you will understand these frameworks. Hey, yes, I read it somewhere, right? So that is how it looks like, team. With this, I have majorly covered everything, whatever I wanted to share, right? If you have any questions, feel free to ask else. Feel free to ask else. I will take you to the last part, right? I'll take you to the last part. Any questions so far? My eyes are on the screen. Any questions you have, team? Else, in the next 10 minutes, we'll start with the quiz part. Don't worry about it. Just 10 more minutes I need from your end. Any questions you have for me? No? Okay. So then, all I just want to tell you is, these are the top 10 items for you to improve your security in AWS account. The very first one, it is too texty, so I'm sorry for that, but it is meant to be, yeah? So first is ensure you have a defined cloud security strategy, incidents response in place. It should include PPT, not the PPT presentation, but people, process, and technology. You need to use the email distribution list for AWS account contact information. It should not hit a dead account where no one is monitoring it. If there is something for you, you would be able to see and respond accordingly. I did talk about backups. Backups are very important, and you need to run your backup DR activities periodically, at least once a year, okay? Depending upon your organization's infosec policies. You need to enable guard duty. Whatever recommendation it tells, you need to have to work on it. You need to have config for your change management, security hub, cloud trail, audit logs for detection of security event observables, okay? Read about AWS foundational security best practices so as to access the risk for critical and high severity for common AWS resource misconfigurations team, fine? And then continuously access for least privilege access with IAM tools. There are tools available, go and check that out. Yeah, replace long leaving credentials with the short lived one to reduce the risk of security impact and scope. OWASP top 10, heard about it? Yeah, SQL injection is being done. You are doing this cross site scripting and so on. Look up for that, what is OWASP top 10? So when your application is going there live, you need to ensure you're taking care of these things. For your operating system, your application and dependencies, apply patches. Routinely train and simulate cloud security events to iterate and improvise. Fine? Okay? And that's all, team. Security is an iterative process. I want to say it's not a one-time activity and you're done with it. Cool? And with this, I'll say thank you. There are links and reference material, whichever I wanted to share. 
is all available out there on the link which has been given to you in the chat section. With this, thanks a lot once again. Over to you, Sanchit. Thanks, Ashang. I mean, I am sure I will not be able to match your energy level the way you have been running for last two hours. So I would really say take some breaks, take some pause, and spend some time right to restore your energy. But yeah, guys, we have Sashank with us for a couple of more minutes. If you have any questions, uh, any queries about securities and all those things, please put in the chat. And yes, uh, whatever the materials we just presented in this, today's session, uh, we all are going to upload it into our repo and share it with all of you guys. For that, if you want some sort of a reminder or some one place where you will get emails and all, so I would still re request everyone, please register at this. So we can send you the reminders for the next session, share the materials as well as any sessions or any help you need, right? So please do register for it. So that's what we have from Sashank. I am been seeing like people are very excited from last two hours for the quiz. With that, let me invite Tejas, who will be our quiz master for today. Hey, Tejas. Yeah, hi, hi, Sanjit. Hi, everyone. Hello, everyone. So yeah, uh, I have posted the link of the, I'm flashing the link for the quiz session in the chat i'll post it again in the session so please register for it uh just a couple of things before we start with the quiz this is going to be a tournament uh so we'll have this quiz at the end of every session till mid of april and the top three winners of this tournament we are going to get a good goodies out of it so to ensure that you have been participating and you have a fair idea about what's happening and other stuff so this is not going to be for per session. This is going to be at the end of the entire series. And you can see live what's happening, who are the leaders, who are leading around the dashboard. So it's quite transparent. But yeah, just want to call that out. Yeah. So yeah, uh, they just to you. And I would request everyone, please. Uh, yeah, please register it right now. Sure. And I'll pass it on to they just. Cool. Um, let me share my screen. Okay. Okay, guys. So you have to, uh, you know, switch the tab to the quiz, uh, quiz dot confirm dot com. We have shared the link with you. So, um, Go to this page, you will see the security series and you will see the poster. And first of all, you need to um, log in. You can log in via your Google account or your normal account. Confirm uh, account won't work. You have to create a separate account or you have to do a separate login for the quiz up part. Okay. So you can do it via Google account or uh, normal email. It's up to you. Okay. We can wait for a few minutes for everyone to join and then I'll start with the quiz. Okay, so after you log in, you will see a button called as confirm my seat. Okay, so you have to confirm your seat. And after that, you will see below that, you know, on the same page, you will see the schedule. Okay, where we have the quiz for today's uh, session. Okay, that is overview of security on cloud. Okay, so what you can do is you can click on that and you will land on the quiz page. Okay, let me know in the comments if you have any you know, questions or uh, if you are facing any challenges. Okay, till then, let me, you know, discuss some rules of the quiz. Okay, as we know, it will be in a tournament kind of thing. Okay, so we will have quiz on every session. And at the end of every session, we will have the quiz and uh, the collective score at the end of this bootcamp. You know, the, we will decide the winner. So it is very much required that you need to be consistent. Okay, because uh, if you miss one quiz, so, you know, it may uh, rank you down on the tournament. Okay, 
so it's basically a mcqs you will have four you no know, one question and four options you have to select only one so it is you know mcq multiple um, you know you have to select like only one option there is no multiple choice okay you don't have to uh, select multiple answers only you have to select only one option and that will be the answer okay and also it's uh, fastest finger first so try to uh, you know make the quick quick decision try to answer quickly so you know so that you can top the board because uh, that's uh, time also matters here okay the more quickly and the more correctly you give the answer the more will be the chances of winning this race okay um let me start here um, okay we have some participants here um yeah okay i can see 23 participants sanjit are we good to go or uh, we should wait for some time no i think let's start okay cool so let me start with the first question okay guys uh, be ready and uh, like uh, keep your eyes on the screen okay so here you go with the first question 3 2 1 and let's start which of the following is incorrect about cloud infrastructure okay it increase it agile agility and performance nearly unlimited scalability improve reliability and higher costs okay okay uh, i remember for, from the session it was on the second or third slide okay 3 2 one and go okay so i see that 67% of the people have given the correct answer that is higher cost so obviously we know that cloud is very famous you know for lowering the cost of your infrastructure so this is the incorrect one okay and on the leaderboard we have um akilan if i'm spelling it correct uh, uh, on the second position we have rohan and the third is jayendra Okay, guys. Let's move on to the next question. And three, two, one, go. Which cloud computing deployment models provide the most flexibility? Is it public cloud, private cloud, hybrid cloud, or you have any other answer? Okay, I'm waiting for the answers. Probably this is the easy question. uh after this wonderful session uh, every question will be easy to you okay time's up let's see how many of people have given the correct answer okay 56 people have given the hybrid okay uh 33 is for public okay uh, guys a uh, hybrid cloud provide more flexibility because you have the power of public as well as private okay okay so on the leaderboard uh, there is a change on the third position we have sashank abhishek and the first and second remains the same okay cool let's move on to the next question and 3 2 1 and go who is responsible for protecting the infrastructure that runs all the services offered in aws cloud okay guys you know think properly who is responsible Because they are asking the infrastructure of AWS. Again, this was on slides. Okay, and time is up. Let's see the answer. It was AWS. I see most of the people have given one and two. Okay, so why? because we have seen there are two you know there were two things uh security of the cloud and security in the cloud okay so as a you know as a customer perspective we are we will be managing our applications you know not the aws we will not be you know managing the ram and the compute and everything okay that's the infrastructure okay so now there is a change in leaderboard we on the first place we have tanmay on the second place we have akilan and the third place we have rohan cool let's move on to the next question 
Uh, next question coming up. What does NIST CSF stands for? Okay, again, we have seen this thing. Okay, guys, you know, look at the options very carefully. You know, uh, it's almost the same. There will be some slight changes in the options. Okay. 10 seconds, last seven seconds. Okay. Let's see if we see any changes in the dashboard. Okay, cool. 53% have given the correct answer. Oh, now it's 50%. Okay, again, we have a change in the leader mode. Again, we have Akilan back on the first place, Rohan, and then Sasha. Okay, let's move on to the next question. That is our fifth question. Okay, be ready, guys. What's the process order for NIST CSF? Okay, we have seen, you know, Shashank explaining a big table around here. So I think probably uh, people will get the answer. Again, be sure, you know, look at the options very carefully. I guess we, you know, we will see some changes on the leaderboard after this question. Yeah, we have a change. Okay, so the option was option C. So 30% have given the correct answer. Again, we have a change in the leaderboard now. Okay, first place is, you know, uh, consistently Akilan is, you know, uh, bagging that first place. Second place is Tanmay and the third place is Rowan. Come on, guys. You know, Shashank, Arvind. Let's come up. Okay, moving on to the next question. That is our sixth question. Which of the following is native infrastructure service provided by AWS? Okay. So you have to think which of this, you know, which of this service kind of uh, belong to infrastructure security thing. Okay. Which of these services provide some security to your infrastructure, to your application? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 33% have given the correct answer. Again, we have a change in the leaderboard. The answer for it, it was AWS Shield. Okay, and the leaderboard here is Akilan on the first place, Sashank on the second place. And we have a new, no new member here on the third place, that is Harish. Okay, let's move on to the next question. That is our seventh question. Which one of the following is not a pillar of AWS well architected framework? So we have, we know that we have six pillars. So which of them is not a pillar? Okay, security, performance efficiency, cost optimization, and data availability. Okay, nine seconds. Five, four, last two seconds. Mm -mm -mm. We have 67% who have given the correct answer. And again, the answer was data availability. Okay. We know that security, performance efficiency, and cost optimization is you no know, are the uh, pillars of well architecture framework. And we do we have a change? Yes, we have a change in the leaderboard. On the first place, again, we have Akilan. On the second, we have Shashan. And on the third place, there is a change. We have Arvind here. Okay. Guys, three more questions to go. Moving on to our next question. Using multi-factor authentication, that is MFA, is a part of which pillar of AWS well architected framework? Does it belong to reliability or security or operational excellence? Or is it sustainability? Okay, guys. On the same page, we have the answer also. Five, four, two seconds last. Okay, and the answer was security. Yeah, we are in the security bootcamp. So we have seen this thing. Now, 84% have given the correct answer and the leaderboard remains the same. 
Okay, next question. We will move to our the, uh, to the ninth question. Okay, last two question, guys. No, answer correctly and you no, know, uh, try to answer as fast as you can. Okay, which of the service can help you you not know, to get access to the resources, manage it and everything, manage the permissions and all. Okay, probably if you have worked with AWS, you might be knowing this thing. Okay, last five seconds. Okay, can we see a change in leader mode? Oops. Oh, oh, everyone has given the correct answer. That is I am. Okay. And the leader board remains the same. Okay, now it's 95%. Cool. Let's move on to the last question. Okay, probably it will be an easy one. Let us see. And it was one of the last statement of which Shashank has given. Security is a dash pro process, not a dash project. Okay. Iterative one time, one time iterative, single distributed, iterative, iterative. Okay. Now, can I get a hundred percent result on this? Okay. Last five seconds, guys. This is the last question of our you know, today's quiz. Uh, okay. Fifty-five percent have given the correct answer here. Okay. So. Security is an iterative pro you know, process, not a one-time project. Okay. Okay. Let me see the leaderboard. Okay. On the third place, we have Tanmay Rane. On the second place, we have Akilan. And we have a change, you know, drastic change. On the first place, we have Arvind here with us. Okay. Congratulations, everyone, uh, you know, for getting the top ranks. And for those who haven't, you know, who are in the list you know probably you can try next time because it's in a form of tournament so you will get multiple tries you can come up in the next place okay um yeah sanjit over to you thanks tejas thank you so much uh so yeah as tejas mentioned don't be sad you have ideally six or seven more attempts to go for till the end of the series to cover up right with that we are here with the end of our session for today uh, again, if you have any questions, please put it in the chat. Sashank is still with us at the backstage, so he'll be happy to share any of the thoughts or anything around it. Uh, also, I'll try to spend some time. Our next session will be on the weekend. We'll have two sessions on Saturday and Sunday, uh, which we'll be covering on Control Tower and the IM Analyzers. We'll share all those kinds of updates on our LinkedIn. So please do subscribe and do register with us to get those all kinds of information quickly. So please go ahead. Hey, I think there is a question who will get the prize. So I think Sumit has mentioned right by teachers and me at the start of the things. The first three winners at the end of the series of the bootcamp are going to get the prize. So stay tuned, participate in all the sessions and you are going to get the prize if you are in the top three of the entire series at the end of the last session, right? So that's all from uh, us from AWS user group Mumbai for this session. We'll be still. If you have any questions, any thoughts, please put it in the chat. We'll be happy to answer them. Thanks, Parna. I hope you like the session for today. So I think we are all good. I don't see any questions. Uh, again, once again, to all the volunteers of AWS User Group Mumbai, thank you to all our community partners, all the speakers, especially Shashank for hosting our spending time from his weekend today. I know he's so occupied with other sessions and other commencements. And last but not the least, thank you to all of our participants for staying for two and a half hours 
I can understand it's not that easy to spend two hours from your weekend and talk about this. So thank you so much. I hope to see you back in our next session. With that, thank you so much. This is the end of this session. We'll see you in the next. Thank you. Thank you, guys.